Hi guys, it's Nicole and I've got a process video for you today. It is the first of the month, so this is a hop that I am hosting. And we are following along with the Creating with Sketches ebook, bundle, class, whatever you want to call it. This is available over at Scrapbook Generation. And for the month of September, we are playing along with the two page number four sketch. For my specific layout, I I have to be honest, this was probably my least favorite of all of the sketches. Something about the overlapping strips, just my brain was immediately like, we don't like this. But I love the end result. So it was one of those like trust the process type things. So when I was looking through the options, I kind of got through all of them and I was like, mm, nothing is like standing out. I ended up settling on option 25, which is the like very last option. And here in a couple minutes, I'm going to show you kind of how I worked around or solved the issue with the overlapping strips that I just personally did not care for. And that could just be the papers I chose, the color palette, the choices that I made of why I didn't like them. I think this would have been really cute if you had done like um, like an Easter layout and maybe you wove them to kind of mimic like a basket or something. I think that would have been really cute. For me, I just kind of did like a true stash dive and mixed a bunch of different papers from my stash. My photos are from a choir concert at my son's school. I want to say this would have been two school years ago. So the photos are very heavy with their colors, which is black and red. This was also the winter choir concert. So I think every, every song that they sang was some sort of a Christmas song or like winter related. So I kind of had a lot of things going on where I knew that I wasn't going to find a collection already designed to fit within those like design choices that I've made. And this is where I really like to get just digging into my stash to kind of come up with something. I did pull this wood grain pattern paper. Hindsight, I wish I would have bought like a whole 25 pack of this. I think it's Cosmo Cricut from like a summer line, but it always reminds me of like either the wood on a pencil or like a gym floor. So I felt like it worked good with like the piano and the fact that they are in the gym bouncing off of all of that red and black. I like, I think this was one of those ones where I struggled to pick the papers, but once I picked a paper and I liked it, it was a little bit easier to go forward. So it was kind of like every step was almost like an uphill just battle with myself of what I wanted to do. And I think it was just because I could not see the end result at this point from looking at that sketch. So I settled on the wood grain for my background, the large mat area. I've got this ombre from the Bella Besties line where it goes from black and then sort of starts to fade. I thought that that would be a good solution for me to have all these different strips of pattern paper on there because if I picked one of the black b-sides and tried to put more black b-sides on top you wouldn't really see it so it was just kind of kind of an issue for me so I just kept trying different papers until I came up with a solution that worked for me as far as the strips I I don't think I used specific measurements I just kind of eyeballed it this music pattern paper is actually a digital download from the Tracy Reed store I will link below. I want to say it's more for like band and orchestra type stuff, but it had this music pattern paper in there. So I only got the pattern paper portion of it and printed just this one. There was a couple red patterns that I kind of had on reserve, but I was pretty confident I'd be able to find something within my scraps, my stash, six by six pads, all of that. Um, like this black and white wonky little stripe. That's, I think, a newer pad that I bought from Honeybee. I've got this red one that's really old. I want to say that's like a fancy pants summer one. 
There's some simple stories, Snap Basics. There's some Doodlebug Petite Prints. There's some Bella Boulevard Besties. Um, lots of six by six pads. And I'm going to kind of just be really strategic in where I place these. Ultimately, it would have been easier to use full 12 inch wide strips for this. But because I've got the sketch option that has the vertical stack of photos, I can hide like split strips behind it, if that makes sense. So basically the amount of strips that you're going to be able to see going from the vertical strip of photos to the right, I have a maximum of six inches that I can use from that. So it was kind of how I based off my sizes. It just kind of laid everything out, tried to figure out where I needed to place things. I do need to basically go to that first right hand black strip because there's spaces between those and you're going to see the strips on the background paper. So this was kind of one of those ones that I had to be cognizant of what was going on, where all the different layers were and what needed to go down in what order, I should say. So a ruler, a pencil, things like that was sort of in place for making sure things were going to be where they needed to be. The sketch has different endpoints for these strips and then like a scattering of embellishments on those endpoints. Personally, that's just a design choice on a sketch that I don't love. So I tend to look for different ways to, to swap that out. In my instance, I chose to keep my strips where they're going to have a blunt end. They're all going to end at the same width. And then instead of having my embellishments go vertically along that edge of the strips, I'm going to take my embellishments and kind of scatter them from the upper left corner to the lower right corner and add a little bit here and there where I feel like it needs stuff. So here you can kind of see where I needed to make sure that those strips on the right are at least going to the edge where those photos are because you can see them between the black strips. At this point, I wasn't loving, I was like, I'm, it's bothering me that I can see them. I didn't like them pushed together. And to me, vellum is such a good like band-aid in instances like this. So I kind of was like, you know what? I think if I take the photos in the black strips, put them on a sheet of vellum and kind of have it as a completely separate layer, that's what's gonna work for me. So, once I've settled on that, I can kind of, you know, keep going and put stuff down. I don't like to fiddle too much. It drives me nuts when things like this move around. So I, as soon as I've kind of made a decision and I've settled on it, I try to move forward and get stuff adhered. Things like this, you saw my phone pop out for a second. I will take pictures along the way because things like this where it's not like a rainbow pattern, it's not a repeating pattern but it's just this weird pattern that I have settled on and I like it. I'll take a picture of it just to make sure that um, I get it back in the same order when I start attaching everything. And I did kind of mimic the ombre in the background with my strips of pattern paper that are gray. So like the top one is super light. There's a plaid one in the middle that's a little bit darker. And then there's a ledger one closer to the bottom that gets a little bit darker. And that gray ledger piece is going to save my behind later in this video. We are going to be doing some surgery because um, if you're new here, I cannot spell. A lot of times I just get going and I don't notice that I have spelled something wrong. And I'm going to have an issue with my title later in the video. Now... This is why I said this is easier if you're using full strips of paper because you can see that that strip goes all the way across. It's going to go behind my photos, those two tall red ones. Everything else, I'm having to piece it together across that gap, and you would think that this would be something that would easily line up. That's what I thought. It didn't. But because they're going to be on the opposite sides of that big strip of photos, it's not as noticeable on the couple that just did not line up. 
I tried my best to kind of use my grid ruler here and keep everything as evenly spaced as possible. I think things get sort of just slightly tilted and slightly crooked when you're gluing things to more of like the center of a piece of paper like this where you don't have you know the straight edge or a margin or something to kind of butt things up. So I'm just taking more like scraps and strips of those same pattern papers filling it in. Um, I did cut off you know some of this extra stuff that was in the middle that didn't really need to be there and I'm gonna go through and mark the lines for stitching and I think I just kind of did like top edge bottom edge top edge bottom edge and just kind of went down all of these I prefer to mark my lines with a pencil and then go poke the holes and go back and erase it I've kind of learned over the years that holding the ruler and trying to poke the holes doesn't work for me because what's happening is I'm not putting enough pressure on my hand that's holding the ruler down and the hand that's poking the holes is slightly pushing the ruler as it goes and so by the time I get done I've got this crooked line so I prefer to draw a line and then come in with a piercing tool and I eyeball my holes this is muscle memory I go with what I like this distance is just kind of what I prefer it's a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch bigger than an eighth of an inch is kind of all I can tell you. Um, this is one of my recent purchases from Amazon. I bought this one and a wood handled one that hadn't come in yet at this point. This one works pretty good. I will say I discovered a cool thing that I can do when I make stacked die cut letters, otherwise known as dickers with this one. For poking holes, it was okay doing a few of them. For me, it's super skinny. So I found that my hand was cramping a lot with it. It just kind of needs to be a little bit chubbier for me. And it's too thin to put one of those like pencil bumpers on. So I don't know. I've since kind of switched to the wooden one that I purchased on Amazon. I'll link both of them below. The one that I really like to use is that little stubby green one. That thing is probably 15 years old. It They don't make it anymore. It was from like a Making Memories toolkit. So if you had that toolkit or still have it, you might have that tool. Um, I mean, you can get by with a thumbtack. Like I have a friend who uses a thumbtack for all of her stitching. Just a regular teeny tiny thumbtack. I don't know how she does it, but but she does. So this is the assembly of that vellum section. I hindsight wish I had assembled my entire layout a little bit differently. I'm going to take the paper with all the red and gray strips downstairs and I'm going to stitch all of those strips. And then I'm also going to take this vellum piece and stitch all of my black stitching as like two separate pieces of paper. If I were to do something like this again, I would have attached that ombre stripe section directly to my wood grain pattern paper before I poked the holes. I would have also attached this vellum layer before I poked the holes because when you stitch directly on, like when you stitch layers directly onto your background paper, everything's just a little bit flatter and a little bit more secure when you stitch separately on things like this it's I don't know how to explain it it's everything kind of just sits on top of the stitching and doesn't lay like super flat and this had a ton of like stitching on those strips so I was just kind of a little bit annoyed with myself that it just didn't even occur to me because I had set my background to the side I was just kind of focused on moving through the different steps of what I was liking while also kind of in the back of my mind troubleshooting, you know, what else did I need to do or what else did I kind of need to start figuring out a plan for the layout. When it came to trying to find a title, I just, I didn't like, I didn't want to just say, you know, winter choir concert. That information was going to be in my journaling. So I wanted something that was just a little bit more like fun. I went through a bunch of different 
like sticker sheets. I looked in the ebook or writing to remember from scrapbook generation. There's an entire PDF section for titles. I looked through there, didn't really see anything that I was loving. And maybe I got that from there. It, this either came from the writing to remember ebook or um, sometimes I'll just pull Google up on my phone and I'll start doing like a caption search or a quote search or title search or something. So I ended up with make your own kind of music and it is spelled correctly on this clear mat. So where I went wrong here in a little bit, I'm not really sure. But I am gonna, I did leave in some of my like surgery of how I fixed it. I sent photos to a friend and she was like, I don't understand how you even, like, where did it go? That paper was chewed up. And I'm like, I got super lucky where my mistake landed. Because I'm sure, as you guys know, once you glue something down with liquid glue, it's there. Like, if you have to peel something up, you better hope you have more paper. You better hope you're, you know, you're starting over something. Otherwise, you're going to have, you know, that peeled paper look. Um, in my Dickers video, I'll link it above, I talk about how these more fiddly fonts, I find, are less fiddly on a mat like this because you almost have a third hand holding the letter for you while you can do your layers and get everything pushed together, scrape any ink that's oozing out from the sides, that kind of a thing. Um... There is a couple fonts that I tend to almost hesitate recommending to people. This is one of them. The tall skinny one is another one from scrapbook.com. Only because if you don't enjoy this type of thing, you're going to find those specific fonts just a pain in the butt. You're going to say that they're too fiddly. Um, I am okay putting them together because of this matte trick that I've kind of developed for myself but I will say that those fonts are the ones that I feel like end result I love the title portion of the layout and the dimension and just the interest that they give to the layout like yes the bold chunky ones are are just as good but there's something about these like skinny detailed fonts that just I don't know they just they look so good once you've gotten all the stacked layers together and you've gotten them on your page. It's just, it's like the best thing ever. I did find the dot to that eye in the word kind, so nobody panic. <laughs> I almost had to cut another one, but I found it. So this is what I was talking about when I came back up here and I put my two layers together and I'm like, dang it. I wish I had thought to stitch directly onto the background paper. This is a lot of thread to try to make sure it stays secure. Um, a lot of times I will take like my liquid glue and I'll just put like a real thin layer on some of that stitching to make sure that it's really gonna stick down. Um, I didn't do it on that big piece because I had enough surface area to kind of get my ATG on there really good. This vellum, vellum doesn't stick that great with anything other than liquid, but you can see through it. So I made sure that all four rows of the stitching had just a little bit of liquid glue onto it and made sure that that was going to be in place before it dries. I do like to go and either secure it with like tweezers in this case, or sometimes I'll put something heavy on top and kind of let it dry while I go do something else. These two photos over here on the right, I decided that just with all the stitching, it almost made everything else feel like it was on a higher level. So I pulled out these one millimeter foam strips from scrapbook.com and I'm going to give them just a little bit of height. To me, the one millimeter is perfect for my dimensional preference. It gives it just a little bit of height without it feeling like it's gonna, you know, take up a ton of space in my album. You know how sometimes you get like too aggressive with the foam tape and then you go put it in your album and you're like, oh, she's thick. <laughs> like, like oh, I, went, I went too far. <laughs> the one millimeter to me is sort of just the perfect, the perfect medium. Um, 
did make sure that my title was kind of where it needed to be. This is another reason why I like using the um, sticky mats. They are generic silhouette sticky mats that I just cut down. Sometimes I'll take one and just cut it into a six by six. Usually I will cut one to fit in like my Misty or a specific purpose. I think that one right there is cut for my Misty, but I'm using it for this purpose. And then the other, you know, the off cuts, I just kind of keep for things like this. So I'm going to go start putting my title on. Um, it was about this part, two letters in when I was like, hold on. I forgot already that I've put foam tape behind those photos. So they're much higher than the background paper that I just tried to glue this letter directly onto. So I shoved some little tiny pieces of foam tape behind there. The other letters, I'm just putting a really small piece on like a chunky part of the letter. I didn't go crazy with the foam tape because it's not gonna stick well to the stitching. So I just put a little bit of foam tape behind the letter put a little bit of liquid glue anywhere that I think it's gonna like overlap something else and put something heavy on it while it kind of settles. Same thing with these thin ones. Um, didn't do foam adhesive because there's no way that that was gonna happen. So with these, I just make sure that I'm a little heavier handed with the liquid glue and sometimes I will hold it with my finger for a couple of seconds before I sort of let it go to start drying on its own. Because I'm using a little bit more glue in this type of situation, I'll do like a word or a couple words and then I'll set something on top of it. This, I'm using the ruler. I think I grabbed my bottle of alcohol just to kind of give it some weight. I use acrylic blocks sometimes. I'll grab a punch, my phone, pretty much anything that's kind of nearby that's got a, enough weight to it that's gonna hold it while it dries. Otherwise it kind of does that like bubbly, wrinkly thing. The D is going on top of that photo where there's some foam, but it's fine. And with my title building in this situation, I kind of spaced it to where the Y is touching that vertical section and the F is touching sort of the outside margin. That's my preference. Now, for some reason, I thought that the I was the center of the word music. It's not. I know how to spell music. I spelled it right on the mat. Here, here I am, clearly, gluing it incorrectly. Lots of glue. Lots of pressure. Making sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And... Here is why I will kind of always advocate for if you have like a scrappy friend that you kind of bounce things back and forth to, definitely send them progress pictures of your layouts. A friend of mine asked me what I was currently working on and I was like, oh, hey, like started out hating this. I'm kind of loving it. I sent it to her. I go downstairs, start making dinner and I get a message, you know, like, you know you spelled music wrong, right? And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way. Like, how could I possibly have spelled that wrong? So later that night, I go upstairs and I'm like, oh, it is for sure. At this point, I'm still, I don't know. The me that's over here die cutting stuff is just thrilled to be done putting that title together. And so this is where I'm going to kind of move on to almost like level two of, like I said in the beginning, where you're kind of stash diving and you're finding things in your room that you can make support your specific theme. Like I said, there's not going to be a specific collection. Could I have gone and found like a Christmas collection and stolen the snowflakes from it? Yes. I did not want to pull out that much product. Um, and I was like, I probably have a die set and I can just kind of do this kind of DIY style. So I found these snowflake dies. I think they're Lawn Fawn. I'll link everything below. That's relatively current and you can still get. You guys should know by now if I'm stash diving, some of this is going to be old. So I cut out a bunch of the snowflakes with some white glitter cardstock. 
no clue where that came from. It's in my drawer of like specialty cardstock that I just hoard and keep die cutting from until it's completely gone. I remembered that in one of the Spellbinders like die cut monthly clubs was this set that was birds. I'm not a bird person, but it was like sending your friend like a note. Like there was something about a note involved in it. And I went and looked and it had music note dies. And I was like, this is perfect. I can't read sheet music, so I don't know what's on like the pattern paper that I printed or what, if, if these matter, I just go with what it looks like. I just think that they're cute and that they're going to work. So I'm going to do just like I do with the title, two layers of white cardstock and then a color on the top. It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but it's, this is a black, not chevron, houndstooth, one of those pattern paper. It's from a six by six pad. You guys know I buy those six by six pads that are just filled with B sides and they come in clutch for things like this. Okay. We're going to do some surgery. This is where I said I got super lucky that I used that grid paper because I used that grid paper. I was able to cut a patch that almost perfectly covered the rips from the glue right along the edge where the stitching was can't be helped like I can't get it underneath the stitches I'm not gonna undo the stitching and redoing it, it, it we're going for like good enough not perfect so I was able to line up the pattern and that almost perfectly covered it up and then I've got like a little hole right here that I was like maybe I can match with like Copics no, it still kind of looks a little funny and it's in a place where I didn't feel like I could add like an embellishment without it being like weird. So I just covered as much as I could with, you know, the letter that needed to go there. And then the little circle for my eye overlapped the leg of that D. So I'm going to come in and do some more surgery. I'm going to line up where that's going to go. I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and literally cut out the section where that that dot needs to go apparently i'm like super out of frame i'm probably really irritated at this point like at myself <laughs> for spelling something wrong i don't know how many layouts at this point i've had a spelling issue but at least it's one of those things where i'm like super aware of it now that i'm just like okay keep an eye out like you know I'll send pictures to the same friend and be like this is the layout I'm working on right now can you please spell check like what you can see on here because I don't want to run into this issue again so like I said overall I'm going with like a corner to corner kind of diagonal sprinkling of embellishments but I'm also pulling it into like the other side of my title and then I am going to add some to like the lower left hand corner just kind of wanted to have like overall just a bunch of different interesting sort of theme supporting elements going on and these I just did the one layer I kept it super flat because I knew that I was probably going to come in and layer some of these like music notes for some reason I had a really hard time trying to figure out where to put them and it's probably because at this point I'm I'm ready to be done with the layout. I've probably got some, some heavy decision fatigue going on, but I'm committed to finishing it. <laughs> so <laughs> I moved these around so many times. I didn't glue anything down until I felt like I liked their overall placement. And I, again, I pulled my phone out, took a picture of it because I knew I was going to, I was going to walk away for a little bit and come back. And then I filled in the gap between the photos with some more of the red pattern paper that I used in the strips, typed up my journaling, just kind of trimmed it to fit within there so you can see a little bit of the edge of that. That December sticker, again we're stash diving, is old October afternoon, the Believe in the Magic one up there, I think one's from an Echo Park sticker sheet, one's from a Simple Story sticker sheet, I just dug through and looked at things that were the color that I needed. I wanted to bring in more red because I've got the black music notes, I've got the white 
snowflakes and the silver words and so I felt like there needed to kind of be a little bit more red. This big long phrase is also from October Afternoon and I don't think I put the year on here. I wrote the year on the back of the layout so that I know where it goes when I go to put the layout away but I just put the the month is already printed on that label and then I'm going to use some stickers to put the date like the day um I did kind of feel like I had some open space so I took some of the smaller snowflakes and cut a couple more out just to kind of fill in some spots that I felt like mm, needed something and I didn't want to bring in like another new element so keep you know cut more of what you've already used type of a thing And just to kind of remind you, this is part of a hop. Any of the other channels that's playing along this month will be linked below. Everybody kind of decides for themselves if they're doing, you know, the original sketch, if they're going to do a variation, if they're going to be a double page or a single page. Everybody kind of figures out what they're going to do. And overall, everybody in the hop starts with the same sketch. But the end results are always so different and it's like it's my favorite time of the month to go through and just kind of see what everybody did what everybody was sort of gravitating towards when they were looking at modifying or anything like that so completed layout i am still kind of getting adjusted to the lighting situation up here since i've removed my blinds so if my photos look a little off i'm so sorry <laughs> i tried um but as always i appreciate you guys for taking time out of your day to spend it with me and watch my videos comment subscribe all that kind of stuff i've got some other videos over here in case you'd like some more inspiration and i'll catch you next time